Hello, welcome. If you want to learn how to scale your new business to six figures, take a seat and grab a pen and paper. I have something special too for those who stay till the end. In this free training, we'll go over keeping God first in your business, developing your products and getting traffic to your site or to your offer. Like many, if you wish you could work in your assignment, have a business that coincides with your purpose, leave the nine to five and have a full fledged six figure business in months, then this training is for you. Have you seen other people have success with leaving the nine to five, but, but you yet have been able to find a way, you know that living as you are, is just no longer fitting your needs or ideals. Then you wanna make a change, but you feel stuck. Even if you've tried and failed, if you've searched all over the internet, but all the information was overwhelming and you need step-by-step -step information, I want you to know that I'll go over this with you. Hold your hand and by the end of the training, you'll at least know how to posture yourself and your product as an expert. Let me tell you a little bit about my story. All was well, bills are paid. I had a business and I was working a nine to five. So all of my bills were paid, but I still at the end of the day knew that something was missing. My purpose needed to be fulfilled. I needed to give in this earth what I was born to do, what God purposed me here for. I knew that I had a solution of some sort and unless I fulfilled it, it wouldn't get fulfilled. At that point of knowing that living the way I was just wasn't enough, I knew I had to make a change. I had to change my habits. I had to change the way I thought and I had to live from a place of substance versus just getting bills paid. For a while, yes, I was afraid and felt alone. I felt like no one knew what I was going through because it's like, you're fine. What do you want to make a change for? Why are you giving up everything that you had? And yes, I did do just that. At the time, I did take a lot of time to myself, but I learned a lot of information. I consumed hours and hours and hours of information online about digital marketing and online marketing. And now I'm realizing the life that I want. I'm able to live on my own terms. I can decide what type of income I would like to make and pace my own self. So if you feel like you want to make that change, but just don't know where to begin, all of that changes now. The way is already made for you. I've put this together in an easy, simple, step-by-step -step process that even a child could do this. All you need to do now is take that leap of faith. Let me tell you a little bit about why I love marketing, online marketing so much. Yes, I do have an agency. And I also have a degree, bachelor's degree in marketing with a master's degree in theology. But I teach CEOs strategy to get them to get sales. For me, it's not just about marketing. It's a marketing initiative to get sales. I'm more concerned with the bottom line. So for CEOs, you can take the training or you can have your teams be taught. I've also taught teams as a consultant. People know that they have an idea, but they figure that it takes them having a huge influence to even make a mark. And it's just not true. You do not have to be a huge influencer. You do not have to build your way up. Even now, the new influencer is changing. The way people look at influencers is new. So before it was about talking about a thing or a product. Now it's, talk, it's talking about spreading ideas and truth. The new influencer spreads ideas and truth. I want you to know that you can still get your product awareness. You can get contracts and be seen as an expert without having to build an influence. So I, the right now is the one of the best times in history. You are at the right place at the right time. So even if you want to leverage other influencers, I want you to know that online business is taking off. The statistics show that 51% of Americans prefer to shop online and 96% of Americans have made an online purchase. 67% of millennials and 56% of Gen Xers prefer to shop online rather than in store. So the time is ripe and the time is right for you right now. Take advantage. In my training, 
my full training, which is in my course. This is just going to be scratching the surface to get you ready for your business. But in my full training, you'll get techniques, playbooks, strategy. You'll be able to put online marketing, simple steps into play for your business, for your product, your service, for whatever platform you want to be an expert on, and to get sales and get clients. I even show you how to do it for free. So yes, you'll first, if you have, if you're starting out in the, as a beginner and you don't even know what to do, we'll go over that. We'll talk about how you work best as a person. We'll tap into who, what your assignment is and how God made you and what that means for your business, your lifestyle, your life path. We'll also give you tools that you need for your marketing, your social media, keywords, everything that you need so that your business ministry prospers, even if you don't have a product, even if you are a speaker. Yes, many business owners have already seen success, tremendous success in their business. And I want you to be able to, to say the same thing as well. Like I said, some of these CEOs have the time to learn, and some of them are so busy day in, day out with their clients that they rather just teach their teams. I can do that for you as well. you see the potential you could have in just days I'm going to go over the training with you but before I begin I want you to know that you can get this course like I'm telling this is going to be this training is going to give you what you need as a grassroots but I go way more in detail in my course and if you join today after this training if you feel like you need more you want someone to walk with you step by step you can join today and my team will help to give you a strategy for your ad campaign or for your social marketing online that leads to bringing in gen, um, gener lead generation. Also, you would get an exclusive membership so that you can get access for tools to accelerate your, your growth. And this is updated continuously. So you'll have templates, Excel sheets, books, eBooks, all types of tools so that you can grow fast. Just get your business started. Again, it's discounted price today. Normally, this is $2.97 for the course, but if you take fast action today, you'll get it for $1.99 and you'll be able to get qualified customers to come to you. Now, on to the teaching, on to the training. I want to tell you three secrets of success. One, yes, the way is the Lord. Two, let's talk about developing your products and what you already have and how to get traffic. So all of your getting is from God. Do not forget that everything is a spiritual thing. You make a decision, but it starts in the spirit realm. Hello, guys. It was Evil J Love here, and I wanted to come here and tell you that you definitely are supposed to have a lot of traffic coming to your business, and it actually gives glory to God when you have a lot of traffic. He said, "He who wants to be among you to be great. If you want to be great, have service to the many." So it gives him glory. It gives God glory when you have service to the many and that your business reaches a lot of people. So today we're going to talk about getting traffic and traffic to your business. Lots of traffic and leveraging. You're going to love the leverage of leveraging traffic and online traffic so that you don't have to go ahead and try to be an influencer and build your own 
um, influence just to have traffic. Okay. So first, let me just dispel some beliefs because I know some people say, yeah, but you're a Christian and, you know, Jesus was a carpenter and all these preconceived notions that are just not true about uh, Jesus and about Christians. God wants us to live in wealth. He wants us to be rich, which is the reason why he made the entire garden full and plenty. I mean, he's made it in the beginning and we're still living off of what he made in the beginning. And he put us in it after it was already finished. He wants us to live in the complete and the finished work of all of the beauty that is him and that he's made. So let's go ahead and get rid of these notions. <laughs> if you will, just come with me and follow along. So the first one I want to dispel of is, of course, the one that Jesus was a carpenter. Well, let's talk about the difference between work and assignment, right? So first of all, when Jesus was a baby, let's recount what happened when he was born. Um, King Herod got wind of the fact that Jesus was born and he wanted to kill baby Jesus. So he sent three wise men. I guess he was hoping they would be kind of like as spies. He sent three wise men to find out about Jesus and where he was so that he could kill them. But they were warned of it by an angel and they went ahead and went to Jesus and found out who he was because the angel met with them and they didn't tell King Herod what they were doing. Now these three wise men, remember, they came from the king and they gave gifts to baby Jesus. So they brought royal gifts with them. And what were these gifts? Frankincense, myrrh, gold. Now remember, frankincense and myrrh, big deal. Myrrh at that time was harder to find than gold. So it had more work even than what gold had. And gold was, of course, the standard of wealth at the time. And if you put all that together back back in that time, all of what they gave him equated to, say, a million dollars. And if you think about it, what a million dollars was today, it was probably millions of dollars that was given to Jesus as a baby just being born, just upon being born. He was given gifts from wise men that came from the king. So he was given frankincense, myrrh, and gold, meaning Joseph and Mary, his mom and dad, did not have to worry. They were not concerned about how to take care of him as a baby or to take care of him. Therefore, he was able to go where his gifting was, not work just to make money, not work just to pay bills, but go to where his assignment would be, where his gifting was. So he became a carpenter. His father was a carpenter. It just so happened that he had the right dad. Of course, God has everything planned out, right? Because it was in Jesus' assignment to learn how to build, to construct. What was he supposed to build and construct, you say? The body of Christ. He was supposed to build a church. He was supposed to build a body, a body of believers. So he was learning how to craft, to form, to hone, to build. And so he was building the church. Now that also um, equates to what happened with Peter. Peter followed Jesus. Jesus was, you know, speaking in his boat, and Peter sowed the seed of his boat and for Jesus to use. So after Peter sowed his boat, Jesus then asked Peter to go out a little into the deep. Remember, Peter was a fisherman. That's what he did by work. That was his training. Family did that. His brothers were him fishing. And Jesus said, go out a little bit into the deep and, you know, catch a draw. So he caught a draw, a whole bunch of fish. At this point, when Peter catches, he's so amazed that he catches so much fish that his nets didn't even burst, but they were just, like, overflowing with fish. He had to call to his other brothers and his other guys to bring in another boat to get catch all of this fish. So they can bring all of the fish in. The boat almost sunk. It was an abundant catch. This goes to show what happens when you invite Jesus into your business. It was an abundant catch. And so then Jesus said, now I'm going to make you a fisher of men. So Peter became, he went from being a fisherman to becoming a fisher of men. So you do you see how he wasn't just working? He was in the right place at the right time according to his calling. And now he was being ushered into his assignment. Now that his provision was taken care of, now that he never has to work again because the amount of fish he caught, his business was able to float 
for an entire year possibly or more without him having to go and catch fish again for another year. So now that he had this abundance, he didn't have to worry about making money anymore. He was able to go into his assignment, which means that your assignment may not necessarily be um, what your work is if you're working just to pay bills and things of that nature. So if you want to find this scripture, you can find it in, um, if you want to find where the kings gave Jesus the frankincense, the myrrh, and the gold, that's Matthew 2, 11. All right, there's also where um, the disciples, there were two disciples that were staying with him. They asked if they could stay with him in John 1, 37 through 39. They said, you know, can we come stay with you? He said, sure, come. And you will see, you know, where I stay. So they stayed with him. So that goes to show that Jesus did have a place where people were saying or believing that when Jesus said the son of man has no place to lay his head, because, um, let me explain that to you. People say, but Jesus had no place to lay his head. Not true. The two disciples said, you know, where are you staying? Can we come? He said, come. And you'll see where I'm staying. So the reason why he said this thing, and I asked God specifically about this, because I heard a preacher on, I heard a preacher speaking about it, and I, it didn't sit right with my soul based on what I know about God. And so I just in myself said, mm, that doesn't sound right. And God answered me. Didn't even pray. I said, oh God, that doesn't sound right. And he answered me and told me the revelation and showed it to me the dream. Jesus said to a man, when a man said, um, Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Like, I will follow you. And this is in um, Luke 9, 57 through 58, where the man says, um, you know, Jesus, I will follow you. And Jesus then turns and says to him, well, the birds of the air, they have nests, the fowls, or um, the foxes have holes. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. What did he mean? He didn't mean he didn't have a place to sleep. He meant there was no place for him to get rest. Meaning, you can follow me, but you're not going to understand anything I'm saying to you. Because here it is, how long will I have to be with you before you guys believe and understand the things that I'm saying? Before you take, are able to download my concepts, my precepts, and understand my ideas? You guys aren't able to grasp my ideas. You can follow me, but you won't be following me. You'll be walking with me, but we won't agree. Meaning, when he um, when he was with the disciples and he did the five loaves and two fish, right? Where he fed the many. So he fed the 5,000. And then again, when he was around the people and he said to the disciples, you know, okay, let's feed these people. And they said, well, what are we going to do? And Jesus was like, did you, were you not there when I fed, when we fed the 5,000 because we believe God? And then he went to go feed the 7,000. So twice he performed that miracle. And it's like, did you believe it the first time? Because you didn't think he could do it the second time. He's like, didn't you see the miracle happen? Did you not understand it? Did you take on that idea to know that we can do this? Do you believe that? How long will I be with you until you believe, until you understand, until you grab it yourself? So what he was saying was, he doesn't have a place to rest his ideas. Meaning when a wife goes and sleeps or rests on her husband's chest, she's not necessarily finding a place to live on his chest. She's laying down her thoughts, her concerns, the things that concern her that day, things that got on her nerves or whatever. She is sharing that with him. But because he's able to understand it, now she takes it off of her chest and rests it on him. And between the two of them, they are both able to have rest. That's like when you uh, settle a matter or... You put a matter to rest is when you can say something to a person and that person takes it and says, oh, yeah, I know what you mean. I understand. And that person says, yes, that's what I meant. That's exactly what, what I'm saying. And they say, OK, I understand what that meant. Now I know moving forward. This is what, you, this is what we'll do. But if that person does not understand, if there's, if there's something blocking that person from getting the revelation, then that matter stays with you. You don't rest. You don't, you're not able to give it to someone. You're not able to rest it on someone else. It stays with you. You have to keep it. God showed it to me in a dream. I was trying to explain something to someone, and the person was blocking their ability to be able to hear me. Now, this was a spiritual block. It was a spiritual block. The person was not able to hear what I was saying. And I, I said, and so in the dream, I was trying to lay my head down here, and it didn't happen. I tried to lay my head. I couldn't get rest here. I tried to lay my head. So what happened was um, God also not only just gave me the dream, he also made the dream come to pass. And I didn't realize that it came to pass until after I said, wait a minute, that happened just like the dream. God was showing me the truth of the matter. I love it. So 
in real life, what happened was, well, I guess it, in dream, it was the real life because it happened exactly the way it happened in the dream. I got the dream first, and then the next, the next, you know, day or however long it was, I was, I called up a friend. I was trying to explain something to them. They were not hearing me, so I tried to explain it this way. I couldn't get it through to them there. And I tried to explain it that way, and I couldn't get it through. And I used another, you know, way of explaining it, and I still couldn't get through to them. So I had to keep the matter with myself. It was frustrating. When you try so hard to explain something to someone and they just don't get where you're coming from, they, they can walk with you and they can talk with you. And it's like you're speaking a different language. They don't understand. They don't get you. And the matter stays with you so that if you had no ill intent or if you had something great that that person could have could have received, they can't even receive it because they can't understand what you're saying. And you're like, I wish you could understand what I'm saying to you. I wish you could be set free or made free based on the, the knowledge I'm trying to give you, but you, you can't take it because there's a spiritual block. So that's exactly what happened. Um, when I said, mm, God, that doesn't sound right. And he, he gave me the revelation. He answered me. He showed it to me a dream and then also played the dream out in my life so that I could understand what it meant fully. So the person, the reason why I kept moving my head it's like I kept explaining it, way, explaining it that way, explaining it that way, and I never was able to get rest. I never was able to get the back and forth with the person. We weren't able to have a dialogue. We weren't able to grow in it. And I push it this way, and they push, that person pushes it back, and I push it back to them, and we push it, and we get to a level of understanding and a level of growth together, and a level we know we weren't able to do it. I had to keep it with me. So Jesus was saying, I'm walking around on this earth, and nobody understands what I'm saying but me. Even when I show you the miracle. Even when I show you my father, you still don't know who my father is. You still don't understand who he is and how he is. Because if you would have known, you would have seen it with me. And if you would have known my father, you would have known who it was when I came. So he's saying, I don't get rest. You can follow me, but you're not going to understand the things that I'm saying. You're not really going to follow. You're not going to follow along. You're not going to follow me. I'm not going to be able to, even in a business, a business owner is able to teach their assistant what to do or tell their assistant what to do. And that assistant is able to, that assistant is able to grab an idea or follow a script or do whatever they saw their business owner do because they can understand what the business owner is saying. But imagine owning a business and none of your assistants know what you're talking about. You're not able to rest. You can't give this assignment to that person. You can't give this assignment. You'll be teaching them and showing them and telling them, but it's like you got to keep it to yourself because they don't understand or they can't grab it. So that was the rest he didn't get. He, he wasn't able to lay his head. He wasn't able to get the rest. He said, I have to go to my father so that where I go, he may be also. So that was what that meant. <laughs> so basically also his disciples were offended sometimes at the things he said. It means that the things that he was saying was so far off. They couldn't understand the idea, the precepts, the concept. It was so far off that some of, his, some of his disciples actually left. They turned and left him. So when Jesus said, you have to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, this, this food is flesh indeed, and, you know, is bread indeed, and this drink is drink indeed. This is the way to have eternal life. You know, when he said that, you have to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Some were offended. Some of his disciples turned from walking from walking with him and turned and walked away. And they stopped following him. They were offended at what he said because it was so far off. They couldn't grasp it. They couldn't understand the concept of communion that they just left. And that's what it feels like. Like. You can't even rest your head with them. Like, I'm telling you something that's the truth. I'm telling you something that can set you free. But instead, you're offended and you leave. That was what he meant when he said he can't rest his head. The ideas, the concepts. He can't just transfer. He can't speak to you even in your own language in a way that you can understand. Yeah. So let's, 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 I'm 100, 100, 100 sure when God told me that, that that was the revelation of, I'm completely sure. So I just wanted to give that also to you so that to dispel of that, so that we can know that um, Jesus definitely had a place to lay his head. 
<laughs> and also why he's a carpenter. He was able to work in his gifting so that he can work in his assignments. All right, guys, now let's get into the message. Let's go ahead and talk about how to get some traffic. So today I want to talk to you about keywords, which is imperative for your business and why? Because keywords helps you bring in targeted audience and targeted traffic based on what you are talking about, discussing, what your offer is, whatever your article is about. So people who are interested in your article or interested in your offer or interested in your product will come to you based on certain words these people are looking for or interested in and um, want to know more about what it is that you offer. So keywords are important to put everywhere. <laughs> you want to put them in your title, you want to put them in um, on your website, you want to have them in the name of your website if you can, if you want to have it in the name of your domain, you want to have it um, also in the titles, you want to have it at the top of the description, say the first paragraph. It's important to get these keywords um, up on your page so that you can start to rank for them and people can look for things on the internet and find you associated with what they're looking for. So come with me and I want you to go ahead and open up your um, a new tab and follow along with me. We're going to look into one of my faves. I'm going to give this one to you. Um, ways of finding keywords and find out what people are interested in, are searching for. So you always want to come from a place of not just talking about your product. It's not going to interest anyone if you just say, this is a tea bag it came from wherever it came from, and it was grown for however many years, or it was, doesn't matter. People want to know how it helps them, how it benefits them, what's in it for me. So you want to know what they're typing on the internet so that you can get ahead of it. Come with me to one of my faves, which is Suho. Go ahead and type this in for URL. I'm going to share my screen so we can look at it together. This I love because you can find information on your keywords in so many different areas. All right. So, say you are talking about um, depression. Right. So if you're talking about depression, you're going to now find information. You're going to find out what they're looking for depression in future, de depression treatment, things of this nature. You're going to find out what, they're, what your audience is typing in YouTube, depression and obsession, depression music, depression and anxiety. You're going to find out what they're searching on the internet so that if you wanted to go ahead and make an article on it, I would use the same words that they're using so that when they type these words in, they'll be able to find your article. This is, this is what they are looking for. Also, Amazon. This is good for telling what types of products people are looking for. They want to know how to eat so that they can beat depression, eat different so that they can beat anxiety. You want to be able to come up with a guide to tell them what foods to eat. This helps with that. They're looking for a workbook. They want to know how to get relief from this, relief, anxiety, relief. So those types of products, if you can come up with any type of product, which will give them relief, you're right where they are. That's where you meet the market, where they already are. Instead of trying to get them interested in what you're interested in or interested in your product, you meet them right where they are in the market. Also on Google, if you want to even get a little bit deeper into this, say mental health, women, or you can say postpartum, Right? There's postpartum workouts, essentials, hair loss, ab workout, belly workout, exercise, or tutorials on, on YouTube. They want to see how to do it. They want to know what solutions you have. They want to actually see it. So anything you see on YouTube is like video. They want a tutorial. They want to see what you're using, how you're using it. This gives you that type of information. Based, just look based on what type of platform it is, you'll be able to tell how to serve your audience. All right, so I love this. I find if you just go ahead and type this in, you're gonna love this. Go ahead and type in whatever your niche is, play around with the different words that come up on Google. And what I mean by that is, if I was to go to, okay, it's not clicking. 
If I was to go on Google and type in postpartum or depression or mental health, there's going to be some other words that come up after Google that tells me what people are searching for on Google. I want to use all those words to see what type of topics I can talk about and meet them in the market at those different topics, not just the word postpartum, not just the word mental health, not just the word depression. I want to get in there for depression for kids, depression for parents. I want to get in there for all the keywords. <clears throat> now, Google, YouTube, all of these, remember, these are like search engines so that you want to rank for those words and you want to be known for that. So People want to know who you are, what you do, and where they can find you. So on your Instagram, when it comes to your profile, you want to tell them who you are and what you do. You want to have words like mental health, depression, anxiety in there if that's what you do. But inside of Instagram, if you want to rank for like an explorer page or for that word having its own page where people can find you outside of your audience, people who do not already know you, people who do not already follow you, then you want to go ahead and rank for a hashtag. Let's talk about ranking for a hashtag. So you would go right into the search bar, put in hashtag, let's go with postpartum. Let's go with post, let's just start here for now. Let's hope I'm spelling it right. Okay. As the first part of body has 1.7 million followers. Do we want to use that? Some of you may, some of you may not. I'm going to tell you why. If this has 1.7 million posts, you're going to say, oh my gosh, this has so many posts. I'm going to use that. It's popular. And what you're going to find is if your page is not popular, you're not going to rank for that, for that post. You're not going to rank for that hashtag. You won't be found. It's almost as if you didn't even use the hashtag because the people who are using this hashtag have 2 million followers, 3 million followers, 4 million followers, a million followers. So when they use this, they come up higher on the, um, on the search page ranking for that keyword. So within Instagram, the way it works is they figure if you have good engagement with your audience, if you have a lot of followers, then your audience knows you for that particular thing that you discussed. And if they can find that word on your Instagram a lot of places, then they figure you are an expert in your field for that. Now, if you don't have as many followers and you don't have as much engagement and you haven't placed the word as many places and people aren't hashtagging the word back to you as in the comments, then you might want to go for something that's ranking a little bit lower. Also, if you only have like 5,000, and 5,000 is a good amount to have on Instagram, 10,000 is a good amount to have on Instagram as followers. But if you only have 5,000, 10,000 followers, then you want to rank, especially to be seen on an Explorer page or to be seen for that, for that word, you want to go ahead and go with something lower, like 4,000 posts, even 1,000 posts, even 100 posts, just to make sure that you'll be seen. Let's say we go postpartum. Postpartum health, maybe? All right, so see how this only has 2,340 posts? If you have 5,000, 10,000 followers and you're already getting some words in on your page for postpartum, this is where you'll be able to compete and actually be seen so that you're not falling all the way down the page. If you're new, you might want to go for the 216 posts. You might even want to go for 100. If you're just starting, if it's a new business you're starting, you might want to go for the lowest amount. Another thing that people do is they look for, when they're looking for a new or looking for something in an area, they type in the word and also the place, the location, which is the same like with Google. You type in the keywords you want to rank for and the location you want to be known for. So that when people come to that area, they look for that keyword in that area, they find you. So I'm just going to put NYC, postpartum NYC. You see that this has 22 posts only. This is so good for you if this was your niche because you'd be able to be seen by people who are in your audience, interested in what you talk about, but don't even know you yet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. So when I click on it, this is what I get. And... Basically, what you're going to do now is just take a look at everything that's on here. Let's click on one and let's see how they're doing. So now when I come here, I can see also what other words they're ranking for. What could be my long tail words? So you would only pay attention to this if this is exactly what you do. 
if they have other words in here and you do not do that in your practice or do that in your business or give that service for your program, don't use those words. You don't want to rank for something that you don't want to be known for. So when I look around, so this person is using it heavy. This is the same business. And they're using, okay, the keywords here. So they're ranking. Their business is being seen on this page for this word in NYC. Also, here's another business. This is a doula business, also known for um, their postpartum support they talk about. The video is really, really good if you want to get your top on the page while you're trying to write a hashtag on Instagram. A video is good. A reel is amazing. They're pushing those right now. So if you could do a reel for your business, then go ahead and do that. I would recommend that for your business. So here is what you can get information for. Kind of see what they're talking about, what kind of keywords they're using. Um, you can basically just make a post and put the hashtag on there. And then later on, just check back with that hashtag to see if you placed on the page. And you want to put as many hashtags um, that you can rank for under your post that you want to be seen for, OK? So that would be a good way to get seen by an audience that doesn't already know who you are, doesn't already know that you exist, especially if you're a new business, right? Keywords for Google, keywords for your website, keywords in your title and also in your profile, and also within the actual platform of Instagram. Um, keywords within Instagram, which will be your hashtags. The hashtags is what you'll be known for or seen for on different pages, like explore pages and such. I hope you use it right now so that you can see it works. Now, the law of multiplication, let's show, I'm gonna show you how you can use something you already do, say every week, every month, and multiply it. Now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how to turn one thing into a lot of things. I'm going to show you one example of how you can take one product or one thing you already do naturally, normally, every day or every week and turn it into, say, 10 products. Now, if you have something that you do every week, you can turn it into an active business or passive. Say you're an evangelist and you can't no longer preach in church, say for the time of COVID. You have one sermon. You don't know what to do with it. So this is what you do. You have plenty of them. You turn them into a reel. You turn them into your marketing materials. You white label products, meaning you can take that one sermon and add some other white label products or PLR, and you can turn it into an ebook. You can now, since you spit out all of these sermons every week or have had a bunch of sermons that you've had for every week, you can turn it into a subscription. You can turn it into a blog or a video. You do not have to sit on the material you already have. I wanna show you too how you can turn all of these things, put them online so that you can speak to your target market, but also how you can use it for active income. So now, if you have these sermons, and now, mind you, you're a particular type of a teacher so you, or preacher, so you're going to be talking to a specific audience. This can turn into a training for someone who wants to be the type of preacher you are or the type of speaker you are. And it could turn into counseling sessions based on what you're talking about. If it breaks down a certain issue in the sermon that you're talking about, you can now use that to bring people in, have one-on-one -on -one sessions, group sessions, on counseling sessions about what it is you're speaking about. Also, you can give guidelines for your sermons. For people who wanna be, say, an evangelist, they know that's the calling, and they want to figure out how to use those sermons or make their sermons to do the same thing that every evangelist does, which is first, acknowledge that Christ loves the church, call to repentance and accepting Christ as your savior. Now, this is also for any type of business. Now you know the pain points of your audience because you know the pain points you yourself had when going offline or going online from when you used to speak at a church. Another thing, your unfair advantage. Let's talk about why you have favor and how you should be 10 times better than the experts in your field because of the blessing that you hold. And I am here to get you excited about starting a new business. I am here to let you know that you are a part of the kingdom and therefore you are the head and not the tail. You are more than a conqueror. 
You are above only and not beneath. You are the lender, not the not the borrower. You're blessed in a city, blessed in the field, blessed when you go in, blessed when you come out. God takes pleasure in your prosperity. Hi, guys. So starting your business, I want you to know that you go in as the head. There's no such thing like the world tells you to work your way up. You come in as you are. You already are who you are. God has put every good thing inside of you. You're not going out to the market to find something. You're going within yourself to find out what it is that you have to offer everyone, everyone else. Your treasure, that's what we're looking for. And that's what bring being brought out of you now. All right, guys. So we're going to just start off going into the scripture just so that you can remember and always know that one, there's no need to make your prices lower because of strongholds and thoughts that we have into our mind that are just not true. So I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and debunk some of your thoughts. And some of you probably already like, yes, 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 yes. I know I am the head and I can tell I am above only and I believe. <laughs> I lend to the nations. I don't borrow, right? All right, so you are blessed and you carry the blessing. So we want to go and just reiterate that because whenever you do anything in your business, one, go with God first. Before you make a decision, always ask him. He will give you insight. He will be the lamp to your feet. When you're walking, even in the dark, you will have light. Everyone else will be in darkness, but you will have the knowledge. You will have the wisdom. You will have the know-how and the wherewithal because he is always with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Emmanuel, that means God with us, not God afar off, not God only when we call on him, but God who is with us. Meaning when we make a call, he's already there and knows the answer before we finish making the call and has the answer already on its way all right, y'all, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Let's just go right into it. <laughs> so we're going to get into some scriptures right now to um, debunk or to just reiterate things that you already know. So first thing I'm going to go in with is Give and it shall be given back to you, sowing and reaping. God will not be mocked right? Just as you sow, mm, you will also, also reap. So be careful what you're sowing because you're going to reap a more bountiful harvest than what you sow. Luke 6, 38 says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and run over. Shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that you meet with, it shall be measured to you again. Meaning when you send something out, it's not going to come back to you the way, it came, the way you sent it out. It's going to come back to you multiplied, right? So you want to give a lot, that means you want to receive a lot. Or if you give a lot, you're going to receive a lot. But you give a little, you receive a little. It'll be multiplied. But it'll be small in comparison to, to if you would have given a lot. Now, be conscientious of the fact that your giving may be different than someone else's giving. All right. So for tithing, um, there was the lady who Jesus was watching the, the um, when he was at the church and he was watching people give and do, give their tithes and their alms. And there was a lady who gave more than all the other people because they gave out of their riches, but she gave out of her want. Right. So when you're giving, don't think, oh, I got to do this and got to do that, got to do that. It's based on where your heart is or it's based on what, what you have and what you don't have that makes it a big gift or not a big gift, right? God is a fair and just God. So giving it shall be given unto you. Now, one of the ways this is applied in business is that if you notice other business people in business who don't necessarily follow ways of the kingdom, they give before they look to receive, right? So they put out articles, they put out things of, of value, they put out things that they know that their audience is looking for in order to receive a like, a comment, a share, in order to see receive good feedback, a recommendation, a referral. They give in order to receive something back. Also, it could be that you give Say you have a new product and you give this new product to a beta group or a test group of people who are um, in your target market and you know that they love what you have. So you definitely want them to try out your your 
get your your um, product, I would say, or service, product or service, because one, they are in your market, they know exactly what the needs of your target audience is. They have those same pain points. They can speak to the pain points and they can tell you whether or not you have um, delivered on things that they knew they had pain points on and things they didn't even know they had pain points on. So this person would first value what you have and give you really good feedback. Also be able to tell you what else they were looking for or what else they might have liked or what else they would like to see from you in the future. So that's one way of giving. And then you give to this group, say for a small, uh, uh, a small amount of people, you give them your product, say for a half price or maybe 75% off. This is the beta testing phase. You can give it to them for free. But in return, a lot of people in business do this before a launch. They get testimonials in return. They get um, likes, comments, shares, people vouching for the product, telling them how they used it, marketing for them, showing how they used it and how they got good, they have good feedback based on, you know, this quality of the product, that quality of the product and how it really helped them out in their life. So that's one way to give and also receive, but um, it's going to multiply the effects of when you, when you give that product to your market for full price because you're gonna already have testimonies of people who are showing their social proof for that product. So that's one way of giving and receiving in business and sowing and reaping. And now I wanna move on to ooh, the revelation that God gave me about the tree. Ha, huh, let's talk about it. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So we all know about the story with Adam and Eve, right? And they were told that they could eat of every tree. There's every beautiful tree in this garden and everything in the art garden was given to them. God made the entire garden and then just put them in it on the, on the sixth day. Once everything was already made for them, they didn't have to go in there and work and toil and make a garden or make apples or make oranges or make herbs. These things were already put there and then God put them in the midst of the finished work. Okay. So then God tells them, he gives them one instruction. He says, don't eat from this tree. What do they do? They eat from this tree. But the revelation that God gave me was what this tree represented. The tree represented, and I want to take you guys back to what in the spirit realm it is and how it was in heaven, right? So in heaven, God made everything, right? And then he also made Satan, Lucifer. Is what his name was in heaven, right? So he made Lucifer and then, you know, he made him to be beautiful and to give off sound. And he was, I guess, supposed to be like the, uh, you know, the worshiper or through him, the pipes, the vows, there was worship going forth. And he was supposed to be a reflection of God. But then he got so haughty within himself and he said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make me my own and I'm going to build my own and I'm going to have my own this, this and that. And that was before he fell down, right? You lift yourself up and then you just get knocked down. So that was before the fall. He fell like lightning. <laughs> when, he, when he fell, was it like lightning? When he fell from heaven. Let me say that. And um, so the tree, so part of the revelation is that's that 10%. 90% of the garden you guys can have full range of that 10%, leave that to God. Now let's talk about it. Because if in business you do tie and off of your business and you tie that 10%, that makes it so that God will make sure that the devourer would not, will not be able to rebuke, will not be able to devour your seed um he will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that 90 percent is always taken care of but if you do not tithe now you know he doesn't you haven't given that over to him in order for him to take care of the 90 percent, in order for him to protect the 90 percent, for him to provide for you in the 90 percent, right for you to see the full provision it's been provided for but that 10 percent is saying god I'm giving you full ownership of, I know that everything that I got came from you. It's because of you that I have it. So what God was saying was, the reason why 
that tree was there. And the reason why Lucifer or Satan said that, you know, if you eat of this tree, you'll be like God. First of all, they were already made to be like God. They already had knowledge and wisdom. All of the wisdom that they needed, they got from God. So he was trying to tell them that they can go and get something that they already had. They would be like God. They were already made in his image. They were already like God. Don't ever let the enemy tell you you can go be like something or have something somebody else has when you already have it within you, is what I'm saying. Know that God has put it all inside of you. Don't go on the outside and get anything. That means that you're working from a place of uh, lack versus abundance. So Satan says, if you eat of this tree, you'll be like God. You'll have you know the knowledge of good and evil. He doesn't want you to know about the knowledge of good and evil. So Eve, who who wasn't given the mandate. She was not told. Adam was told. He was the one given the instruction, but then he gave the instruction to Eve, but then Eve was beguiled. She was tricked by Satan. Now, now let's talk about why Satan just so happened to be around that tree. So remember the demonstration or the illustration I gave you of who he was in heaven and what happened and how he got knocked down, right? So that tree was a mere representation of that. It was a representation of that entity. It was a representation of that selfishness of saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this myself. So I used to live in a Spanish speaking country, right? And in the Spanish speaking country, whenever we would say sin, S-I-N, sin, the word sin, S-I-N, like the word sin, it's so funny how it parallels English and in Spanish. The word sin means to be without. God is saying, you sin when you do anything without me. When you think that you're going to do this of your own strength and you think you got it, or oh, I'm going to do this without God, or oh, I'm going to leave God out of this part. He can have this part, but he can't have that part. I'm going to leave him out. That's the sin. So Satan was already of that, and he wanted them to experience that. Now let's talk about it. Let's talk about how we know. Let's talk about how we know, because we just talked about sowing and reaping. You sow, and then you reap what you sow. So therefore, God gave them the punishment equivalent to the sin that they just partaken of when they ate of the fruit. So the fruit was not necessarily just the fruit. What God is saying is the fruit is the fullness of that thing. So whenever you sow a seed, a seed goes into the ground and it dies and it turns into a tree. First, it turns into a little plant. You see it, it starts to bud. You see something coming up, but you don't yet know what that fruit is. And once it turns into a tree or once it buds and it starts to bear fruit, then you see the fruit of it. It was already that thing but when it was planted into the ground, but now you see and are able to eat of it once it's become, it's become full and it becomes ripe, meaning it was already that thing from the beginning, but at the end, you see what it was in the earth, it, outside of what it was made to be in the beginning. Okay, so above the earth, you see what it already was underneath the earth, meaning in the spirit realm, you already are a thing. And in the natural, we get to see it play out in your life. So what he's saying is the fruit, not necessarily an apple or an orange or a grape, is the fullness of the seed of the tree, which is why Satan was there because he himself was selfish enough to say, I'm going to do this in my own strength. I'm going to do this in my own might. So when Eve ate of the fruit, she ate of the fullness of that idea. She ate of the full. They say that if you if you want to be a millionaire, take advice from a millionaire. They say if you want to be poor, take advice from a poor man. Meaning, do not take advice from a poor man if you're looking to be rich because you're eating the fruit of that thing. Taking on that idea. 
in the fullness of it all. Meaning she in turn said, I want to know everything myself. I don't have to leave this up to God. I'll do this myself and ate of that fruit. Let's talk about how we know that's the case because God revealed this to me. When I was talking to him, he talks to me about trees and nature and things of that nature. And he revealed this to me and talked to me about the trees and why this tree was that tree and how he saw that tree and how, why it took a, why it did cause death to them a spiritual death, a supernatural death, because now he was not able to protect them. He wasn't able to protect their 90% anymore because they wanted to do it of their own. So therefore the repercussion of them eating of the fruit was what now? Now Adam has to work by the sweat of his own brow he has to work hard and toil, meaning he has to grapple and hope that it works out. He has, he has to do trial and error and hope that it works out. Maybe 60% of his work will prosper. Maybe 40% of his work will prosper. Maybe 10% of his work will prosper. He does not know. But when they gave the 10% and didn't touch it, that tithe, that 10% was given over to God, it was always 90% return on a 10% investment. Meaning I give this to you and God, you take care of everything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto you. So when they said I can do it myself now as a man, as the mandate of what a man is um, in the earth, the representation of a protector and a provider. Now he has to go provide in his own strength and what he provides and what he makes up. It, it's not protected by God. It can still be stolen. It can still be taken away from him in unawares time when he's sleeping. Uh, he's get, he got a he got a, a ticket out of nowhere. All of a sudden, uh, the gas pipe broke. All of a sudden, all these things are happening to take away the money in little ways that you didn't even think of. But the ten percent that was given to God, none of those things happened before. Tickets didn't come out of anywhere. You didn't get stopped and pulled over for just anything. Now all of a sudden. It's, it's not protected. Let's talk about it for the woman, the woman who's the caregiver, the nurturer. So the thing that she brings forth is to produce. So when she produces now, she has to do it in pain. She has to do it in agony. They say when a woman gives birth, it's like 120 bones crushing at the same time. So now she has to bear, which it was not painful. A supernatural birth is not painful. A supernatural birth, you can tell your body when to give birth. You can tell it how, you can tell the baby to turn around and do all types of stuff supernatural birth has is not painful that's the way it was before but when we're going to do it ourselves and we're going to take care of ourselves now she has to know the pain and agony of giving birth and bringing something into the earth that was already in the spirit realm it has to happen in pain now and in toy so the exact repercussion and the punishment that was given was based on the sin that was committed. So God is saying, yeah, if you want to do it in your own strength, you want to be like that, you're going to now know everything. You're going to know the things that I was protecting you from. You're going to know the things that I kept hidden, things you didn't have to know because I protect you and I provide for you and I make sure. And I stand over everything and I watch over everything to protect it, to make sure that it's good. But you got it? Okay. I'm a just God. I gave you free free realm. Like you can do what you want to do. You have the choice to do what you want to do. You want to do it. I, I'm a, he's going to be a gentleman about it. He's going to be a gentleman about it. You want to do it yourself? Go right ahead. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Take You want to take do the work yourself? So in the blessing, work is not like that. If you heard the story of George Washington Carver, he said he didn't have to grab or, or work for things. He didn't have to try to figure things out. This man came over, came up with over 300 inventions with a peanut. Over 300. He, he, okay. He went into his laboratory and didn't take a book. And, and during that time, you had other people who had laboratories, the best laboratories, A1 laboratories. He had uh, a Bunsen burner and a Bible and did more with less because of God. So that's what I'm saying about the sowing and reaping in the tree. Yeah, 
So let's know about that when we're going into this with our business because we want to experience the blessing of God. Let's talk about how you are supposed to be up against your competitors. We're going to go to Daniel 120. The king, okay, let's start at 19. Daniel 1, 19, the king talked with them and found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. This is Meshach, Kim, you know, this is Abednego, before the slave names were given over to them. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service in every manner of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them. He found them 10 times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. These are people who trusted God and were with God and prayed to God and relied on God so that even when they were up against trials and, temp and, and temptations to serve another God, they did not bow their knee to another God. They believed God. They said, if we will go into this fire, into this fire, um, fiery furnace, we know that he will be there. And if he's not, we still will not bow down to your God. That's the kind of trust. That's the kind of reliance. That's the kind of dependence they had on God. How were they rewarded? They were given, they were 10 times better than the experts in there. These were three slaves, three young men. I mean, they weren't slaves before they were captured, but they were 10 times better. It means you, you're supposed to blow out your competition because you get your wisdom from on high. You don't get your wisdom from here. All right. So I just want I just wanted to encourage you in that. I just wanted to, to encourage you in that, whether it's the fasting and the praying, whether it's the taking communion, whether it's pre praying in tongues and speaking in tongues, whether it's praying to God about a certain thing. You're supposed, you're supposed to be able to take a thing to God, go to sleep, wake up with the answer. So if you thought that was something, I want you to know that I go way more in depth. You get way more information. You get follow along. And you get to use your screen, you get to pause, rewind, keep the screen right next to you as you're building your business. In my nine lessons with over three hours of training, you'll forever have access to it. You can download spreadsheets, worksheets, you get the video training that will be with you from now until forever. You get access to the acceleration tools and the strategy for your campaigns and for ad campaigns. Remember, the discount for getting this course at only $199 will not last long. Act fast. If you try to get this anyplace else, you are looking at thousands of dollars for trying to get demonstration and techniques and strategy, not just information, but demonstration techniques and strategy. If you try to take these classes on, at any school or any place of education, it's going to be a month of classes and it's going to be in the thousands of dollars. But today, acting fast, the price won't even be $297, which is under the fair market value. You'll get it at $199. And you can start your business and your passion today. And you can make income with whatever, wherever you are right now. strategy exclusive membership it you will get it right away that discount is not gonna last long you guys and the subscription i want you to know that this is not just a subscription for just any old excel sheets and spreadsheets these are mapped out sheets for how to use your social media if the toolkit is continuously growing it's always being updated Guys, you can hover over this barcode right here. Yes, take your phone out, put, pull up your picture, and put your phone over this barcode, and it will give you the link right now so that you can go to the course yourself. Take a look at the course. See all that's in there. No matter what level you are or what you're doing right now, you can get started. So go to the barcode, hover over it. Yes, right now, get your phone. Hover over the barcode, and it'll lead you to the page. The checkout is very simple. And you can enroll and be welcomed into the course right now. If you enroll now, you know you get your bonuses. You know that you've seen other business owners 
and they've given testimonies on how they have grown exponentially in their business. I want the same for you, but you'll also get a social media calendar. You get a Pinterest organizer. You'll get website optimization tools. It'll tell you how to optimize all of your profiles. If you get this today, you would also get those add-ons. The name of the course is Prosper in the Kingdom and in Business. I want you to be mission-minded and I want you to prosper, not just in business, but in the, biz in the kingdom and in business. Take action now. Time is running out on getting that discount for $1.99 today. And I want to welcome all the people who've already joined the course. The people are still joining daily. So I just want to give a welcome for all who are joining and tell you. And thank you for investing in yourself to become a better you and feel in line with who you are as a person. I get many questions. Some of them are, does this course teach how to get clients? Yes. I tell you how to get clients, um, even for free, by using social media tactics. Another one is social media platforms covered. In this particular course, we cover Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. What level business owner can get the most out of this training? If you are a new Christian, if you have a new business, if you have a new business venture, this is good for you. Even if you've had businesses before, but you're a new Christian and you want to go about your, be about your father's business, this is great for you. Even if you've had a business before and you want to grow in that business because you have a new venture, this is great for you. I've also um, this course has also been used by people who have had great businesses before and have loved the course. I've gotten great feedback for people who wanted to start a new business. Is this for a brick and mortar? Um, this is for a brick and mortar if you're choosing to go online. So it's not necessarily for your brick and mortar store, but if you're deciding to get to the online market, then yes, this is for you. And I want to thank all of you guys who have stayed all the way to the end. As I promised, I have a gift for you. A special gift today is if you go to my site, tools.evajlove.com, you will get a 30% discount store-wide. The code is 1DAY30. Discount code 1DAY30. I want to thank you guys for showing up today and encourage you to be your best self. All right, guys. Bye.